And the Lord be with you. Oh, it's great to see you. It really is to have you here and to celebrate and come together in Christ. And uh, so it's neat to have you here and encourage you to consider staying with us for the Sunday adults with the um, uh, very Adventy themed uh, of uh, prepare ye. Last week we pondered, this week we'll look at prayer. Lots of scripture to look at in Sunday adults. So I encourage you to join us right after the church uh, uh, worship uh, for to feast on God's word. Some other announcements, uh, it's, this information is so new it's not even in writing yet, but after much prayer and pondering, what about Christmas Eve, Christmas Day? Well, this is what we're going to do, and there'll be more information later, but we'll do 5 and 6.30 on Christmas Eve, and because we won't be able to sterilize and such by <laughs> Christmas morning this year, so it's not a, we're not punting Christmas Day, but this year we're going to not meet on Christmas Day. Um, so that's, that's the plan. So Christmas Eve at 5 and 6.30. And uh, then also I want to announce that uh, starting January 3rd, uh, we, we did it like 12 years ago, and I, it, it was one of my favorite Bible studies, and I want to do it again. And it's going through the Gospel of John, including the movie of the Gospel of John that uses nothing but Scripture. That's the entire text of the movie is nothing but Scripture. So we'll look at the text, and I'll break it down for you in its smallest components. We'll watch the video, and then we can be film critics to see whether you feel the director uh, was faithful to the text. So that's something you can kind of come in and out of because it's like 28 weeks. It'll take us on into the summer, but it's really, really neat. We'll start here and maybe by the summer we'll be able to, to go downstairs in the cafeteria once again. Uh, but that's starting January, Sunday, January 3rd. Uh, an epic journey through the Gospel of John in Sunday adults. And uh, we'll have midweek service, uh, uh, Bible studies as well. I'll tell, talk about those another time. All right, again, great to have you here as we gather in the spirit of worship. There's a Somebody's pointing. Oh, it's just a small bird. It's not a hawk. It's not a hawk. Okay. Well, we'll ignore it, and uh, it'll go away eventually. <laughs> you know, there's a. Yeah. 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 He is. Wow, how can he stand on the window? That's not going to be distracting for you, is it? <laughs> okay. Oh, dear. All right. Yeah, it's God. There's a, I'll, I'll, there's a, there's a sermon illustration in here somewhere, but I, will, uh, I can't think of it yet. But give me time. So, oh. Yeah. So. To let more in? <laughs> okay. Well, if you would like to, except I don't know if the birds get low ever. Um, like in the song of the cattle are lowing. But I don't know if birds are lowing. Um, and after all, Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always to the very end of the age. We have lots of wonderful things to talk about in God's love for you today, so let's begin. This is a day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Stand and give everybody a great big wave, and if the bird comes by, grab it as it goes.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Prepare the way of the Lord. Recalling our baptism into Christ, we confess our sins to God in the full assurance of the gift of forgiveness by the mighty sacrifice of his Son. O oh God, from the wilderness of lives disfigured and crushed by the devil, our own sin and the sins of others, we cry out to you for the forgiveness of our sins, those that trouble us as well as those of which we are not aware. Restore our life and faith by your own command for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Let your light scatter the darkness. Restore us, O God, let your face shine that we may be saved. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. You brought a vine out of Egypt. It took deep root and filled the land. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the Restore us, O oh God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts by your mighty word and spirit, O oh Lord, that we may be prepared to receive your gifts of life and salvation through the forgiveness of our sins, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Sometimes the words can be comforting in themselves. In, in Hebrew, he, Isaiah starts out, Nakamu, nakamu ami, wa omer elohim in Hebrew. So it's comforting just to hear those words as Gordon Poley assists with that. And the words that we hear are, are brought forth in Jesus himself to whom John the Baptist points to. So that's a theme this morning too, of pointing Jesus out to people. Hear the word of the Lord. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Advent is from Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry. And I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass wither. The, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. The epistle is from 2 Peter chapter 3. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn? But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth, in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish, and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to stand as we say together our verse. Alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. 
the uh, first chapter. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated as we invite your inner child forward for a special time together. And the Lord be with you. Ah, oh, it's a beautiful day when you're with the Lord. This, um, uh, we do have some, some extra uh, ch children's uh, sticker books back there. I think it's three or four of them. So if you know somebody that could use those, please take them with you. Take the two-dimensional uh, village uh, as well as the sticker book. Now the theme in the sticker book it's kind of neat, it's, um, this time of year strings are all over the board when it comes to being tuned. Okay, close enough. <laughs> it's the best I can do today. All right, the, um, so take those with you. And the theme in the sticker book is, it's kind of neat, the, the man who wrote it said that when he was young and he heard away in the manger, he didn't hear it meaning away as in far away. He heard it as using the indefinite article, a. So it's a way in the manger, that the, a way to heaven was in the manger. So the theme in the sticker book is the way in the manger. And his name is, it certainly is. So um, something we started several years ago is um, our tradition is that this season that we're in right now is not Christmas. It's the Advent season. We're waiting for the Christmas season to get here. And then when it gets here, we have the 12 days of Christmas all the way to Epiphany. And we sing Christmas carols and Christmas hymns. Up until then, we sing Advent hymns. Right? Because it's Advent. So I've, I've bowed to uh, requests. As people were saying, you know, everybody else gets to sing Christmas carols nowadays or Christmas songs now. Why can't we? So I try to do, I'm going to try to do at least one each week. So this is the one for this week. And it's um, the theme from the sticker book. Uh, not the way in the manger, but a way in a manger. And that first note's always a little tricky, isn't it? A way in a manger, no crib for a bed. You know this one? The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky look down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. You know the second verse? That's, that's when the cows get down. They're lowing. Ew. That's how they used to say get down in the old days. They get down. The cows are getting down. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes. But little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love the Lord Jesus, look down from the sky. And stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. 
As you return to your seats, we'll continue with the singing of the message hymn. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. From the Gospel of Mark, and John preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. So the story is told of a person visiting Jerusalem down by the Whaling Wall where uh, the Jewish community goes to uh, face the wall and, and pray regularly. And as uh, one old man was leaving, the tourist said, how long have you been coming here to pray? And the man said, 60 years. And the tourist said, 60 years? Wow, what do you pray for? He said, well, I... I pray for the, um, the peace of the, between Christians and Jews and Muslims. I pray for all the wars and the hatred to stop. I pray for all the children to grow up safely as responsible adults and to love each other. Wow. How does it feel after doing this for 60 years? And he said, like I'm talking to a wall. <laughs> What's it all about? What about the Browns, huh? What about COVID-19? What's about the 19 I can't afford to go shopping days before Christmas? And what's it all about? It's about Jesus, yeah. It's not about us. 
The Gospel of Mark jumps right in. I mean, the first line there, he jumps right into the narrative about the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And he quotes from uh, the great prophet Isaiah, and he quotes from Malachi, the last uh, prophetic book that we list in the Hebrew Scriptures, uh, talking about the one who would prepare the way of the Lord. The one who would prepare the way for the Lord and then points us, Mark does, he points us to the fulfillment of those prophecies in the person of John the baptizer. He's an imposing man of God out in the wilderness. And while most people wore clothes made of woven cloth, no, not John the Baptist, not John the baptizer. He made clothing made of animal skins with a, a leather belt. Now, where does leather come from? It's made of animal skin. And in order to make a belt out of animal skin, what has to happen to the animal? There has, to be, uh, there has to be bloodshed. Now, does that sound vaguely familiar? Remember Adam and Eve. They tried to make clothing for themselves, and it didn't hide them from God, didn't cover their sin at all. But after they were removed from the Garden of Eden on account of their sin, God made clothing for them out of animal skins. So in order for them to have animal skin clothing, what had to happen to the animals? There had to be bloodshed in order for their nakedness of sin to be covered. So we look at John the baptizer and kind of remember all of this and remember the promise uh, of God that there would be one who would come and crush the head of Satan. I heard a, a translation recently that, that described it, used the word instead of crush, grind, would grind the head of Satan, you will grind his heel. Uh, that that's, that's a very poignant way of describing that. So we have that promise that there'd be one who would grind the head of Satan. And so John the baptizer is here pointing to him. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And he's pointing to Jesus. So John the baptizer really is the last Old Testament prophet. And unlike the other Old Testament prophets, John gets to see who he's prophesying. Gets to see him. So... Uh, the the uh, uh, Adam and Eve were cast into the wilderness apart from God. What was that all about? God did not want the people he loved to live forever condemned from sin, so he separated them from the tree of life. He promised one who would come to grind the head of Satan. You see, it's about Jesus. John the baptizer was attracting huge crowds who came out into the wilderness where he was by the Jordan River. It was in the wilderness, but it was near the major trade routes and less than a day's walk from Jerusalem. So it wasn't that hard to get there from other places. The, the, that piece of geography in what we call uh, Israel today is just not that big. So people were coming. Word was getting out about this man and his baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Now that's different to the ears of the people that didn't know the scriptures. What was that all about? Well, sins forgiven by a baptism of repentance... You mean that we don't have to pay these huge taxes, these temple taxes that the, the Pharisees and Sadducees were levying, and we, we don't have to make expensive animal sacrifices to be forgiven, just, just confess our need for a Savior and let God wash your sins away in that promise of God? Well, that's pretty special. Well, John knew that people were starting to think pretty highly about him. John knew that. And so he wanted to make it clear that it's not about me. It's not about him. It's not about me. And he preached saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie. Yeah, it's not about John. It's about Jesus. Now, John was a popular and powerful man. What made him unworthy to stoop down and untie the shoelaces of someone, especially Jesus. Which, by the way, that job of untying shoelaces was the job of the, of the lowest slave in the household because it was a dirty job. I mean, think about it. Think about the streets. Today we have pretty clean streets, but think about streets back then, all that would be in the streets. Yuck. And so when you came to the house, first thing you'd do is you'd take off your shoes and wash your feet. So those shoestrings were gunky. Ugh. So John is not even high enough in the order of humanity to even do that. He is a humble, humble servant of the Lord. What was that all about? Well, who is more powerful? The messenger that brings the message of victory or the one who won the victory? 
Which is more powerful? Yeah, it's the one who wins the victory. So Jesus won the victory over death of sin on the cross, and John understood that Jesus is the one who would win the victory. It's about Jesus. So we enter a season when we can get distracted and get off message. So many children get the idea that this season is about them. And uh, perhaps that's natural. If, if you're a child and every time this time of year, what you experience is people asking you, what do you want for Christmas, little boy? And you tell these adults what you want for Christmas. And lo and behold, you get that for Christmas. Cool. It must be all about me, they conclude. And um, they get what they want. Great. But what's the downside here? <laughs> there isn't one from a kid's perspective. But when we talk about gift giving, remember the gift giving at Christmas needs to be put into perspective. Often people reference the wise men who arrive at Epiphany. Actually, the, on the 12th day of Christmas is when we celebrate the arrival of the wise men. Um, that's why our wise men uh, won't arrive until Epiphany. That will be in the manger scene here. Now they'll be traveling through the church. Each week they will have moved a little bit, getting closer to the manger, but they won't arrive at the manger until June, uh, the week of, uh, it'll be the Sunday before January 6th. But uh, giving at Christmas needs to be put into perspective. The gifts of the three kings were given to God. They weren't given to each other. They weren't given to kids. They were given to the child Jesus, who is God. His kingdom is not built by human hands. Only his hands can build it up and can lift it up. Surely you know or are familiar with the movie A Christmas Story. I have to admit, we've already watched it this year. And uh, uh, I, when that movie first came out, I had, I had discovered it by 1984. And um, uh, I have watched it every year ever since. I loved it. Then. It came out in 83. So I just love that movie. It's a lot of fun. You remember the scene where Randy's going to school and he can't put his arms down and he gets knocked over and because his arms are stuck out like this that he can't get up. And so it takes somebody else to pick him up. And that's the way we are too. We're trapped in sin. We can't get up. We can't get up. And God has stooped down to us and picked us up in baptism and carries us and nourishes us in his very body and blood and his word today. He picks us up and carries us and will lift us all the way to heaven. And that's what it's all about. It's about Jesus. So, when the COVID lifestyle started last spring, I don't think anybody thought it would still be annoyed by it here in December. It has affected politics, it's affected jobs, it's affected businesses and schools and churches, it's affected emotions. As a uh, there's kind of a loneliness, there's kind of a grief that's part of this whole process. But here we are. So will St. Thomas stand up and stand out again after all of this? We've had to make a bunch of changes here too. Will the people who have cautiously stayed away return when all this is over here at St. Thomas? Well, maybe not all of them. But maybe some new people will be led here as well. God is still working through us. God is still working through you to build the community spiritually as you carry with you the confidence and peace that you have in Christ in the midst of this to the people in the community. St. Thomas has shown itself to be pretty resilient with a love for faith and family and Christian education. But what will not change is what we are about as a congregation. It's not about our organ or the stained glass, the hymnals, or even about the preacher or about you and me. It's much bigger than all of that. It's about, it's about Jesus. So we are in a wonderful west side wilderness, wasteland spiritually. With, there are tens of thousands, over 20,000 people within a two-mile radius. That's right, over 20,000 people within a two-mile radius who do not know Jesus. They don't understand what this season is about. What they hear on the radio is far from what you are hearing and experiencing and believe in your life. And we cannot pick them up by our own reason or strength. There's no reasoning with them. There's not. That would be like talking to a wall. Like John the baptizer, though, each of us can point to the advent of Christmas. And the Holy Spirit works through the message of Christmas. That's not about us. It's about and all God's people said. 
And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Let's sing our verse of response as printed in your worship folder. response to what we've heard we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed as we confess I believe in one God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God begotten of his Father before all worlds God of God light of light very God of very God begotten not made being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Um, something I neglected to mention earlier is that this coming Saturday at 9 o'clock, we could use uh, many hands make light work, and we'd make them like to make light work of uh, setting up the huge Christmas tree that we have here and the different decorations around the church. So uh, if you could mention it to me before you leave or let me know during the week, uh, but next week at 9 o'clock, uh, could use extra hands uh, to undo everything and set up the nativity scene and all that next, su next Saturday at 9. Uh, in our prayers today, uh, Ed Hendershot, we thank God that he's with us today after being under observation. Dorothy Sunai doing much better now uh, and healing and getting uh, stronger there. Members, family, and friends who have uh, COVID-19. Christians in Ethiopia, as there's an unsettledness there. 75 years of building the community spiritually here. President Trump and President-elect Biden, first responders in the military, and the enrollment for next fall is already open for the Early Childhood Center. And once again, we plan on doing in-person classes. Uh, we stepped out in faith this year doing that, and uh, uh, it's worked out well. So we're continuing to have in-person classes in our Early Childhood Center. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we give thanks this day for calling us and the whole world to repentance and faith by your holy prophets, by your servant John the Baptist, and by your own Son whose spirit calls, gathers, and enlightens everyone through the mighty word and sacraments. Grant that we and all who hear his voice remain faithful in the fellowship of your holy church. Lord, in your mercy, continue to give your blessing, power, and grace to your church, especially all pastors and servants you've called and given to guard, feed, and teach your flock. We thank you for your service through us for 75 years in Rocky River, and thank you for the pastors and teachers and volunteers and, and servants who have served here. Lord, in your mercy, give us stability to our country, 
supplying all who make, administer, and judge our laws with wisdom and goodwill toward all people. So we lift up especially all those who have been elected, as well as President Trump and uh, uh, President-elect Biden. Lord, in your mercy, bless the schools of the church and all centers of learning and research that those who teach would serve you honorably and that our common life may be conformed to the ways of your truth. And we pray that you continue to use us in our early childhood center to help further faith and family and education in this community. Lord, in your mercy, by your word and spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow, need, sickness, or adversity. Support all who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those whom, to whom death draws near, and give your turn, tender care to all, as we especially we remember the Christians in Ethiopia, unsure of what's going on there, but we had heard that Christians were being persecuted there, especially in these weeks. And so we pray that you protect them, and uh, may the violence in that country uh, pass them by. Lord, in your mercy. Remembering those who have loved and served you who now rest from their labors, we give you thanks. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up to you Dorothy and, and we, uh, as she continues to heal and Ed, who's with us today, we thank you for answering prayers for strength there. Be with other members, family and friends who've, who have the COVID. Help them to recover quickly and that there be no lasting damage. And uh, we pray that we're part of the solution and not part of the problem in our own community. Lord, in your mercy. As we also lift up to you the first responders, not, not only locally, but also in the military, that you keep them and their families safe. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, again, an invitation. Join us for Sunday Adults as we have uh, the Advent theme uh, echoed. There are lots of scripture to go through today. So join us for Sunday Adults right in here after the service. We now worship the Lord with our tithes and special offerings as we sing our offertory. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the gifts you've given us as we return to you our first fruits. Multiply them and use them to help build the community spiritually, that others may know of your love this season through the birth of our Savior, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.